Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you some of my customizations that I use on these devices. So let's begin. So as you may know, I've been using these handhelds a lot recently. So I've been putting a lot of my customization or my own little twist to them to get them to where I want. Now, I wouldn't say that this is the best guide out there or the ultimate guide, but yeah, it's this is my preferences on getting these devices the way I want to work. I'm gonna show you a demo of how this one looks because I have this kind of set up the way I need it. Then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna set up on this blank RG556, which is basically the same device, just it looks different, but it's the same CPU and everything. So to begin, I am using a different launcher and you can see that this is very different from what you would normally see. And I do have some of the systems installed on here. So say like if I want to go into DOS, I go in here and I want to play Raptor. I could, and then just select the EXE that I want, and then here we go. Obviously, I'm not gonna be playing this game right now or any games in general because I respect your toilet time, but yeah, definitely the launcher is a must because the original launcher that comes with this is terrible. So we are gonna be replacing the launcher with something like this. This way, I could show you, like if I go into, say, GameCube, you could see how this looks like, which is pretty cool. You got the little logos over here, your art, because the original launch that it comes with, to get the box art to work is very annoying. But yeah, using a different launcher like this, you will get all your box art working. You can make it look like this as well. And yeah, you could practically get any system that you want in here that this originally already has. Now I am missing a bunch of systems. That's because I don't plan to install them or I don't really have any need for it yet. So I'll install them as I go. But for now I do have only a handful of systems. So like say PS2, you can see some of the games that I have in here. I don't have many. I'm only putting in the games that I want to play because I am using the internal storage. But what's cool about this whole thing is that since this is also Android based, I can actually install, well, one, Android games. Like this game just came out, which is an amazing game. I've been playing this on Steam, but now since it's on Android, it's, it's gonna work amazing. Same goes for this, WinLater. If I wanted to install like specific uh, Windows games, I can, like I have Freelancer here, which I showed a little preview on my community section. But yeah, over here I could say, like say if I wanna play Crisis, I could get this started. And it is running on the one by one resolution, 720 by 720 resolution. It's not great because this is using a Unisoc CPU. So in order to get good performance, you really do want to have something like uh, Snapdragon or something with a better GPU. But otherwise it does work. I could get games to load. You could see that this is the intro loading and it is native resolution. But I do gotta say, the load times are ridiculous for this. So depending on the game that you plan to install, I don't know, Windows might not be the best solution, but yes, it does work. Since this is registered as a gamepad, I can play this game normally. So I could go into single player. I'm gonna load a game and I'll just load from the beginning. And like I said, load times are ridiculously long for this, so I don't even recommend it. But if you really want to play something like Freelance or something, yes, it does work. And the thing like pre-2009s, I think works pretty well. Now I am using a specific version, which I'll leave a link down in the description below called WinLater Mali, which allows for Unisoc CPUs and other CPUs that uses the Mali GPU. So I am able to get some decent acceleration out of this, but still not as good as Snapdragon. Here, let me brighten up the screen. And here we go at 720 by 720 resolution. It's not too bad, but there are graphical glitches and you could see like some blocking. You could see that that's blocking right now, but it does work pretty well. And this is at nighttime. So I don't know if this is the best preview for you guys to see, but so far it does play. Uh, the controls are a little weird because I could hit this and it'll think it's something else and it'll switch my weapons out. But it does run pretty well. Now, I don't know why it's not showing my FPS, but this is 720 by 720 on medium settings. And I get about 20 to 25 FPS just roaming around over here. But you do see like graphical glitches. And I probably could fix that because I think it has to do something with I have to install to get those uh, cleared up. But otherwise, yeah, Crisis does run on this and it's actually not too bad. Like I said, anything pre-2009, I think it should run pretty well on this device. Now, I am going to exit this because I am not going to be playing this game. Again, I respect your toilet time. So, ultimately, this is what we come down to. Now, I also did remap this key, which is the R key right over here, if you could see. And normally, it would just bring you back to the default shell. But in my case, say if I go to my home, like my normal home over here, and I press that button, it will actually bring me right back into that library. All right, so let's jump into it. All right, here we have, like... The device is pretty brand new. Like I don't have much games installed into this. And if I press the R key right over here, it'll bring me back to their shell, 
which again works but it's not that great it does have the collection of games but i can't hide the games that i don't have so like i don't have any games for game boy or neo geo but it was still showing this list so there's no way to really hide it and to get games to actually work say let me see playstation 2 I go in here, you can see that I have two games. I could actually switch between systems. I could switch between the tabs on top. And to get it to read the games off the internal storage, I could go to select and it'll have emulator settings and then I could just add all the stuff over here. All in all, it does work out of the box if this is what you just want. But again, there's no box art. Uh, it's hard to get it on there. It's quite annoying actually. It doesn't hide the systems that I, uh, I don't plan to play. So to begin, what we're gonna do is get out of this. You can actually download all this stuff through Aptoids if you don't wanna use the Play Store. You could also download all the stuff that I'm talking about through Play Store, or you could go to their GitHub and manually download it on their SD card, which is what I did. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to Files, head over to the SD card that I have all the stuff installed into. I'm gonna go into Downloads. And the first thing we're gonna install is this 4017. Now this is actually called Digisho. I'm gonna leave a link right over here to show you what it's called. But that's what you wanna install. Now if this is the first time you're installing anything on SD, you do have to go into settings and you have to allow unknown sources. And then now I can reinstall it right there, Digisho. And if I want to actually get that to work, first thing I'm gonna do is head back into home and just click on one of those. Now, the first thing you wanna do is actually download platforms. So the platforms I'm gonna be downloading is the games I'm gonna be playing. So I have PS2 on here and I have Game Boy Advance. So I'm just gonna do Game Boy Advance and I think I have PlayStation and PS2. So I'm just gonna do PlayStation Portable because I have that. And then I'm also gonna select PlayStation 2, Sony PlayStation 2. And then I'm gonna hit import. Now this is gonna download all the stuff. Now, originally what it comes with is, doesn't just look standard. So the next step, what I'm gonna do is press the shoulder buttons all the way to settings, go over to appearance, sorry, download wallpaper pack, and then I'm gonna scroll down to, I think it's called Pico, or uh, Pop. Now Pop Mini is actually made for this type of screen, which is like four, four by three. So if you have a wide screen like this, you will want the regular Pop. Download pack, confirm. And with this done, now we could just head back into library or you could use the shoulder buttons and now you have the box art and everything that you want or the ones that I'm using for each thing. So now that I have these platforms up in here, which is the Sony PlayStation 2, Game Boy Advance and PlayStation Portable, I'm gonna head over to PlayStation 2, head the, press this little icon on the bottom right. From here, you have to select the player setting. Now, because it, it already has a default setting as PS2 and third X2, I don't have to really touch anything. But normally you would have to go here and actually change it to something else like uh, RetroArch 64 or whatever it is, depending on what you plan to use the player as. So I'm gonna hit save. And then now I could go over to paths, add more, go into my ROMs folder, and then I go into PS2. And then I'm gonna use this folder, allow, and then sync. From here, it's gonna find all the games in that folder, which I think was Final Fantasy X and something else. And then I could hit library and it'll find the game that I want in there. Obviously, you give it a few seconds, it'll actually start syncing, which means it's gonna download all the box arts and I think it just finished. So I'm gonna go back into library and there you go. That's my box art for that game. Head back out. Same thing with the other systems. If I wanted the other system to say Game Boy Advance, actually say PlayStation Portable, I'm gonna double check this, the settings, make sure that it's actually using the correct one, which is PS, PPSSPP, and there's different versions. If you got the gold version or whatever it is you wanna select, it does have the proper version for me, so I'm just gonna hit cancel, and then I'm gonna go into paths, add more, and then from here, I'm gonna go back out to ROMs, go over to PSP, use this folder, allow, and then I'm gonna hit sync, and there you go, go back into libraries and there I have all my games. Now again, you have to wait until the sync icon is over and then you'll start seeing the box art. So if you have a lot of games like Meme or GBA or whatever it is, you have like a thousand games or whatever it is, it's gonna take forever just to download all the box art, but it will do it. Now there's a few settings in here that you might want to take a look at, which is the scraper. Some of the stuff like the library, let me see if I get to it, I'm back out of that. Uh, go to library, scroll all the way down to the bottom and usually what I like to do is disable player warnings just in case if you have any issues and you won't keep seeing a box that comes up. And two, get back out of here, videos and sounds. 
And then preview videos, I want to disable that and preview sounds. I don't want to have those playing every time when I select the game with a preview video and an audio. So I usually disable those two. But again, it's user preference. If you like it, you would keep those. But in my case, like you see now the box art is here. All right, next up, what we're going to do is actually remap this button. So this is actually F10, the real little R button right over here. So we're going to head back out. And I am going to go to the files. And I am going to go back to my SD card and I'm going to install something called button remapper. Now, you can actually, again, download this. Take a look at this icon. So you can re-download this through Play Store or through App Toys. But I do already have the APK here and I downloaded it already. So once I install that, I could open that up, enable the services because it needs accessibility to do this. I'm going to hit continue, go into accessibilities, OK. Now, because I downloaded it not from the Play Store, it's giving me a security issue. So you go into app info and then there should be a three dots over here and then you just have to allow the permission. Now you go back into this program, go into here, continue. And then you can allow to use the button remapper. And that is it. Once you have this enabled, all you have to do is add a button. So add this button. The key, press down, other, select the button. I'm going to press that. It knows it's going to be F10. And then recent apps, I'm going to change this over to other, open an app. And this is where I would choose the app that I just downloaded, which is the Dijoshin. Die G Show, and it, you have to enable block system action, and then hit OK. And then from then on, now if I press that, it's going to open Die G Show Launcher. So that's how I remap this button to opening this instead. Now you could also remap the back and home button if you want to. I didn't do that just in case if I need to back out and see the desktop for any reason. But for me, you could always remap that as well. Last but not least, what we want to do is actually install something called WinLater. And I'm going to leave a link to the Molly version, which I'm going to be using on this video. And there are different versions and it does apply. Now I am using the Antutu benchmark version and I don't really know what the difference between these other versions are. But I know that when I was using Glib, I can get Freelancer to work on this perfectly fine but I wasn't able to get Freelancer to work on the first version. So your mileage may vary depending on the game and it's quite annoying to know which one you want because it depends on the game. So you're gonna have to do your own research. All in all, to get Crisis working, I was using the WinMolly N22 version. And this is based off WinLater 7.1 and I know WinLater 8.0 just came out so it's not going to have that version out yet. But again, if you are planning to install Windows games, to be honest, it's more of a novelty on this device because the CPU is just not that strong. But you can get older games to work on this perfectly fine. Now once you get that installed, allow that installing system files which takes a little bit of time and then you can start adding your containers like whatever games you're planning to play. Anyway, if you are looking for more of a detailed guide for each one of these things, let me know down in the description below because I could actually make a full video now with WinLater getting games to work on this if you want or more about the launcher itself or just some game previews off these two devices. Let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I'm saying, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.